Hey friends and welcome back. Did you ever push code to production by mistake or got tangled up in branches or merge conflicts? Well, we've all been there. Today I'm going to share 5 git commands that will change your coding life whether you're a newbie or a pro in git. So let's dive right in. Pushing to the wrong branch or some files were missing in your latest commit is a common issue. And all we know is that we want to undo the last commit. And this is where the first command comes really handy. And the command is the following. git reset dash dash mixed head wave one. The dash dash mixed option basically means that we want to keep our changes in the commit locally. So we do not basically discard them and we want to keep them in our current branch. The head wave one option means that we basically want to undo all of the commits until the commit before our latest commit. So basically undo our latest changes. It's a pretty straightforward command, but it can be really powerful. So let's just dive in into one example. So we are in our latest project and we've noticed that some comments were missing. So we didn't properly describe our C function here. Now, if we type in git log, which basically gives us the history of our commits, we can see that we want to undo the latest changes, but still keep our local changes so that we can enhance the latest comment. For that, we just basically type in git reset dash dash mixed, and then we want the latest commit basically. Now we can see here that the unstaged changes after reset are actually displayed. So we have our main RS file, which now contains basically our newest changes. And now we can feel free to enhance this comment and then recommit the changes. The second command is pretty useful as well, because let's just imagine that we want to hotfix a bug in production or stage, but we do not want to reset our local changes. But we also do not want to push our changes because they are not ready yet. For that, we can use the git stash command. And that basically means that we can cache our local changes, which is pretty nice. Now, whenever these changes are cached with git stash, we can say git stash pop to basically pull out the latest changes in the stash and then apply them to our local branch. Now obviously you can stash multiple versions in your cache or in the git cache and you can always list them with git stash list. So let's just dive in with one example about the git stash command. So let's just say I wrote this line here, hello world. But now I quickly notice that there is some problem in production and I want to stash this change. What I can easily do is go into my terminal and say git stash. Now what this did was caching my changes. So we don't see the hello world comment here. However, if we now say git stash pop, it describes what files were manipulated while applying this specific stash. And then if we go back to our file, we now see the applied comment again. So this way we can really easily cache our changes when, for instance, switching to another branch or fixing some hotter issue. Now the third command gives you a good overview on who actually made the changes on a specific file. And it is git blame. Now with that easy command, we can actually see all the changes, including the time, date and author that were made to a specific file. So let's quickly dive into one example again. So let's say I want to see all the changes and the commits in our main RS file. With that in mind, we can actually now say git blame and then specify the file. And what we can see here are all the changes that have been made to this specific file. So we can see the author, time, date, commit hash, also of a specific line. And this is pretty neat. Now just for your information, if you use this command to exit this, just press Q. That's basically it. The fourth command is pretty similar to git blame and it is the enhanced version of git log. Now this enhanced version gives you a more detailed overview if you want to look back only one specific time range. So for instance, if you want to see all the changes that have been made for over three weeks, for instance, you can do that with this command. For that, we only use git log dash dash since and then we describe in what time interval. Here we can use hours, minutes, even a timestamp and we say three weeks. 
for instance. So we want to basically get all the logs, all the commits of a specific files that have been made over three weeks. And we now define the main RS file again. And what we can see now in this log are all the changes that have been made over the last three weeks. And this command is really nice if you want to see all the changes in a given time range. The next command lets you rewrite history. Now that sounds pretty scary, but it's pretty useful if you have, for instance, a spelling mistake in your latest commit. And obviously, if you do want to look really professional, then you want to have really good commit messages. And this command is only in addition to the commit command. And it is the option dash dash amend, which just changes the latest commit message. So let's just go one more last time into one example. So let's just say that we've now added all our latest changes to the commit history. And now we say git commit dash m, this was a change. But oh no, I forgot an H in the change. And this looks really unprofessional. And maybe you've even pushed it now to production or the commit history of your remote repository. Now with that in mind, we can easily make use of the dash dash amend option. Now this even works if you pushed your code to the remote repository. So with that, we can just say git commit dash dash amend dash m and then we basically fix our latest commit. And like I said, if you already made your change to the remote repository, you can now go ahead and say git push dash dash force to override the latest commit with your commit message. And that was it with all the lovely commands you can use in your git journey. So I hope these commands were somehow useful for you. Thank you so much for watching and have a lovely day. Bye bye.